Um, I mean, she would if I asked her to. Yeah, so then why don't you just get food food? Because nothing else sounded good. I can't freaking taste, so it doesn't Oh, yeah, matter. how does it taste like when you're eating this now? I put cranberry sauce on it. I'm like, I don't know what the point was. I can't taste it. So can you just feel the texture instead? Yeah, but I can feel myself like getting weaker. Because at first I was like, well, if I can't taste anything, I might as well try to lose like 20 pounds. And then, then you're just sick, right? Yeah. What if you go to Italy and you don't have your taste or sense of smell back? Oh my God. Can you imagine That'd all that so gelato? Be so sad. The pasta. <laughs> yeah. Is it pasta or pasta? I say pasta. Everyone else says pasta. So is that the correct American language term for it? Pasta, I think. But my mom's Canadian, so I say some Canadian things. Oh. The base flag. Welcome back to the Beige Flag Podcast, everyone. With us, we have our great co-host, Haley Hartwig, who still is under the weather. So we, she is under I quarantine, would like to actually. I everyone that I have COVID and that I ran a half marathon with COVID, but I didn't know that it was COVID, so. So yeah. she made everyone at the half marathon sick. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> I don't think so. I wasn't that... I mean, I was kind of, yeah, it was not good. I thought it was just okay. like nerves, but no. Gotcha. Anyways, and how are I, you feeling? I feel like you're getting better, right? Yeah, actually, I am getting better. I sound way worse than I actually am. But today, after eating some bad Olive Garden last night, I have been going to the bathroom every 30 minutes today. Remember when you forced me to try Olive Garden because it was such an American staple? Yeah, and it is an American staple. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't get that that part of the American staple. I don't know if I need to go back. Okay, but like think about it this. For two people, two mains and a dessert was seventy-five dollars. How has Olive Garden yeah, how has Olive Garden gotten so expensive over the years? Well, I don't know what it used to be. It was never, like, super cheap, though, was it? No, it was like, I heard it was the way for uh, mid middle-class families to go out for dinner. That's what the initial concept was. I thought that was McDonald's. No, McDonald's was like, it's like student class like me to go out and eat. Ah. Okay. You know me. Okay, I well, nothing, right? speaking of Anyways. different classes, <laughs> I don't know if that's a great way to introduce her. But you guys, we have our very first cat guest today. And I'll do a little introduction because I am the one that picked her. Thank you, Adam, for giving me some creative control, finally. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, our guest today is a TikToker, a writer, a entrepreneur just a really really cool person and she has a ton of dating experience so i think you guys are really going to enjoy her take on dating in 2023 and yeah i cannot wait to talk to her so welcome hannah to the beige flag podcast thank you thank you for having me i'm excited to be here um, well, I have followed you on TikTok for years and I am like fangirling right now. So yes, I'm so thank you, Bailey. That's yeah. so sweet. It's been a journey. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, but super excited to hear your take on some stuff. Um, I gave a little introduction before you joined, but if you want to kind of just introduce yourself and anything you want our listeners to know, that would be great. Yeah, I'm Hannah Stella. Um, I'm a writer and content creator. I write a substack called Moxie twice a week. And I also make content on TikTok and Instagram. And um, I live in New York City. I don't know. That's that's the story. Awesome. And <laughs> you... you debate, just but... Sorry, oh, Adam, go ahead. I'll... No, I was just saying, Haley and I have this debate on why I think New York City is the best city in the U.S. 
and Haley wholehearted, wholeheartedly disagrees whenever I bring that up. <laughs> what do you think is the best city? I'm partial to Seattle. I just don't think anything is city. But yeah. Also, Adam thinks it's the best city in the world. I agree. And I've been to most of them. Okay. See? I, I mean, I, I am a New Yorker at this point. I've been here. I, I took a sabbatical, but I've been here since I was 18. And I just, there's just nothing quite like New York to me. I think Seattle's probably like more livable. It's probably better if you're a practical person, but um, I'm not. <laughs> fair enough. That's fair. Um, all right. So our podcast is a, just about dating in 2023. Um, mm -hmm. It started because Adam went on 100 dates in 2022. And so we just wanted to you know, use that for the content. I love that. <laughs> Men, women, or both. I sound like a sex uh, educator. Adam, who do you on dates with? Oh, I, yeah, I just went on 113 dates with women over 2022. And I just needed to figure out who I wanted, who I wanted to be or who I wanted to date. And like for right now, I think the answer is no one. So that's no. why. <laughs> so then. I was having this conversation with uh, one of my male friends. We went to dinner and, you know, he always says like, oh, I want to get married. No, I want to have kids. And I'm like, no, you don't. Cause you would. <laughs> like, Wait, how many cats do you? You haven't just not met her. You've been on dates with 250 women at least. Like it's just fine. I think sometimes, yeah. like, yeah. Go ahead, Haley. Yeah, so Adam is, you're 28, right? Mm -hmm. 28. And feeling some pressure to kind of settle down. But like he said, he's kind of decided he doesn't want to date anyone right now. But then also feeling the pressure of society and ultimately wanting to, like, get married and settle down and so just wanted to like hear your perspective on what how to deal with society's expectations of dating like as you enter your 30s yeah so I I first of all I think that 28 is so young and I think whether there should or shouldn't be there are differences between men and women and especially as a man, like 28 is so young and maybe New York is a little bit different. I do think that like New York ages, you feel younger here than in other places just because of the age that people do things. But I, I, I'm surprised that at 28, you feel that pressure. And I think that you just have to not worry about those kind of expectations or what people think that you should be doing. You have to be very honest with yourself about what you want and what you're doing. And you have to sort of say like, okay, what do I want for my life? And are my choices that I'm making getting me closer to those goals? But like what other people think you should be doing is, is often ill-informed. I mean, Adam, I have a question for you. The people who you yeah. feel pressure from, where you feel like they're, they want you to settle down. Do you want to trade places with any of them? So here's the thing. I come from like a South Asian background and I don't know if you have like a lot of uh, South Asian friends. It's a common thing. As soon as you turn 25, you're supposed to get married and have kids. Um, I'm one of the only people in my friend group from Pakistan who is not married. And then, but in my friend group in the US, none of us are married. So there's a big disconnect and just this next week, my um, cousin who's closest in age to me is getting married. Uh, he's five days older than I am. So everybody's now gearing up because I'm the oldest child of the oldest son in my mm -hmm. extended family. So that's why there's an extended pressure where like now he needs to get married. Why he's it? Why is he not married yet? Yeah, I, I mean, I do think that cultural pressure is is sort of unique and different from sort of just like the timeline of general society. And I, um, I don't have a lot of personal insight into that, 
but I understand how it's difficult. Uh, are, is most of your family still in Pakistan? They are, almost all of them. And yeah. what, you and your cousin, what, is your, what, are, what are your signs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm I'm July 3rd so I'm a cancer I think he's a cancer too because he's June 28th he's also a cancer yeah yeah okay so I think Steep, we're yeah deeply. I I don't like to admit that but I do and then um, mm -hmm. and so the that's why I have to be yeah it does your feelings and they say like why are you doing this yeah yeah so then that's how I became too stubborn for my own good now Mm-hmm. So it happens to me. <laughs> hey, 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 I've been to enough therapy to be in while in one with my emotions mm -hmm. now. So my therapist eventually said you graduated therapy, I don't need to see you anymore. I know you're supposed to be interviewing me, but I, I have so many questions. So you want a hundred how many of the hundred dates were second dates? All first dates, you <laughs> oh. want a hundred first dates? 113 first dates, uh, got into $40,000 of debt after it. Do you, do you think women should offer, I don't offer to pay, but do you think women should offer to pay on dates? Uh, no. Well, I, if somebody offers to pay me on a date, like just last night I went on like my 15th date with this person and I still won't accept like a cent from her. Wait, you've been on 15 dates with a person, but you don't want to date anybody? Because... One five? <laughs> one five. Yeah. Because this date has an expiration date on it. She's going to leave the country in April. <laughs> okay. All right. 15? So, well, that's your goal. See, why does everybody keep on saying that? <laughs> 15 days? Okay, it could be more. I think it's probably oh way God. more. Okay, so, so you're dating a woman and you are upset because no. she's going to leave the country in April so it can't go anywhere, but you like her and she doesn't pay for anything. No, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't, I don't, okay, so <laughs> there's too many, there's too, we're going, okay, let's step back a little. This is how one, we you're through. correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But two, we he picked her because of the expiration date. So that is true. Like I knew the first time I met her, I knew she was gonna leave in April anyways. Okay. Yeah, so you liked that because you don't like commitment and so you were like, Okay, good, no matter how much I like this person, there's an expiration date so I can go on more than five or six dates with her because usually whenever things start to heat up with a woman, you cut it off because it like freaks you out. No, I thought we were going to go on one date and it's going to be over. And now look at us like yeah. hanging out for the 15th time because it's so easy to hang out with her. Yeah, because you like her. What's yeah, your of sign? Course. And, then, and, she, and she likes my cats too, so it works out perfectly. Wait, yeah. is she a Leo? She must be a Leo, right? What, when is I she? Think she's... Sep September 30th? What is that? Oh, no. That's a Libra. She's very pretty. So what, most Libras are very, they care about their appearance. They're attractive. All right. Where is she? What country is she going to in April? She hasn't decided yet. Uh, so she's on like these oh. temporary work assignments. Um, so then she switches every like six months to a year. Okay. Um, but, all right. Well, I don't think we have time to unpack this, but I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I am. <laughs> when every it doesn't matter what anybody thinks, but when everybody thinks the same thing, there's usually a little bit of truth to that, babe. Let's not just call her my girlfriend. We just call her Lisa, right? That's her code name that we use on the podcast yeah. for her. So okay. there's Lisa, and then there's Fiji. Fiji's a girl from New York City because she's a finance girl. Okay. So. Uh, we were talking and it's also because I personally, as you said, afraid of commitment. So I do not want to get into a relationship. So I'll pick out this relationship that have this short time period. Mm -hmm. But given that now we want to talk about your relationships and how they have been. <laughs> oh, I also, I also am bad with commitment. I'm not, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> no, so we were <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I was I was going through all your TikTok today. 
I'm just kidding. I'm totally teasing. Adam's clearly done a lot of dating, but yeah. he's done mostly apps. And okay. so I know that you, or I've, I've seen that you've been taking a little break from apps and doing some more organic meats. Yeah. No more apps. I think I'm never going to go on another app. Really? No okay. Why? Pretty committed. Yeah. Well, it's so easy to meet people in person. Okay. Explain that because I think a lot of people disagree. Uh, so, so I, I guess my philosophy on apps is that you shouldn't use them unless you need to. And there are a lot of reasons you could need to, right? You could work a job where like the finance girl from Hinge or whatever, like she probably works a lot and long hours and stuff. And so like going out and meeting people is going to be more difficult or you could be sort of a shy or introverted person or, you know, for whatever, you might have something about you where you, you sort of want people to know that, if that makes sense. Like if you have like three kids, not that that's a bad thing, but maybe like for meeting people in person, you go, Oh, okay. Like actually I just want to go on an app so that I only am talking to people who like know this and are fine with it, whatever it is. Um, I just, so I feel like apps can be really hard to get like a vibe filter you're looking at all of these kind of like superficial things. Like you're like, how tall is he? What's his job? What do his pictures look like? And like, of course we all care about those things, but if you meet people in real life, that they're in the same place as you means that they have something in common with you. Right. And so I just, I was meeting probably half of the people I'd go on dates with in person. And I was like, this is so much more fun. And so I just decided to stop. Uh, the apps, but how I meet people in person is, um, well, I, I live in New York city. I live by myself. And so I do not cook a lot because, um, it's annoying to cook for one person. And so most nights I go out to eat and I either go to dinner with a friend or I'll go by myself and I'll sit at the bar. And if you just go to like a vibey restaurant and you are with either one friend or by yourself, people will talk to you. Or if you go, if you go to, I don't know, I dated a guy for a while that I met at a nightclub. Um, you just, you just talk to people. And I think as a woman, I do think that you have to kind of go into it with the vibe that you are open to meeting people and kind of project that energy. And I think the best way to do that is to be open to meeting people rather than open to meeting romantic connections, if that makes sense. Like I went to dinner a couple of weeks ago by myself and I ended up sort of eating with like sitting next to me at the bar was this couple who were probably 40 years older than me, 35, 40 years older than me. And we had like a really nice conversation and it was really, it was really nice to talk to them. And I think that the better energy to have is like, I'm going to go out and be social and meet people and talk to people rather than like, I'm going to go out and get people's number. If that makes sense. Yeah, I think definitely. Well, How like, does do someone people- stand up? Oh, go ahead, Dan. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Do pe- How do people approach you at a bar now? Because in my mind, if it's like, if you're sitting there, my inkling is like, you do not want to be disturbed and you're like with your friends. And like with a nightclub, I understand there's like people do want to, are more open, but at approaching someone at a bar, I've only seen that in TV shows from like when I was growing up. It doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> it happens. I promise. <laughs> I would say, so I think the key is to go with one friend, not with like a crew. I think that like, if you want to meet people, you need to be with one, maybe two other people. I do think a group of five or six people, like you're hanging out with your friends. Um, but I, I would say, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you can make eye contact with somebody. You can wink. I know that sounds so crazy, but like flirting's always cringy. So just like lean into the cringe. Um, how people approach you actually, um, the, I don't know if this was the most recent guy, but I'll tell you two things that happened. I was at dinner. These were separate nights, but I was at dinner with my sister and there was a guy who was kind of looking at me. And so I smiled at him 
And then he left like a long note with the bartender with his phone number and the bartender gave it to me. And then another time I was also, my sister and her very close. I was also at dinner with my sister and uh, we were sitting at the bar having dinner. Um, but the restaurant, the bar was pretty crowded. It's like kind of a, we were at a pretty popular place. And um, a guy came up to me and he was like, hey, like I can't really get the bartender's attention to pay. Will you give him my credit card? And then I did. And then he was like, will you sign the slip for me? And I was like, yeah, I suppose so. And he was like, yeah, and put your number on there too. Okay, see, that was pretty smooth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty my, good. Yeah. My usual one is like, I ask them if they have a band aid and then go with my usual pickup line. What is your usual pickup line? What are your moves? <laughs> Hannah, do you have a band aid? And I, like, I'll generally ask people, like, hey, do you have a band aid with a serious face? And then. I you, I don't I, I wouldn't I don't carry bandits I wouldn't have one. Oh, oh, that's a shame because I scraped my knees falling for you. Okay, can I give you some feedback? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Please, please, maybe he'll listen. I think that's a little too full on, where it seems kind of like it's it's silly and i like that it's silly but i would be like oh okay like this guy's just like going around saying that to women tonight you have to make a girl feel special that is true my other one is just tapping them on the shoulder and telling them they're the most beautiful person i've ever seen that actually would work that that's much better i, I think that's great <laughs> i have no notes for that <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it, actually, two guys that I've dated for a while have done the, the will you get the bartender's attention or the paying thing to ask me to sign their credit card slips. Yeah. I think that maybe was in a men's magazine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Adam, take a note of that one. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm using the next time um, I'm out and about. Okay, so what... What do you think about first dates? Do you think that should be a good investment of time? Or do you think like a coffee or ice cream is reasonable? Or do you think um, it's the only I mean, So for my, this is my opinion for myself. I think everybody should do what they want to do. And I think I've learned that I like dating more than most people it seems that most people hate dating i think it's so fun it's like you get to get dressed up you get to go out you get to kind of be like the version of yourself that you want to be worst case scenario like you have kind of a funny story i mean i guess very worst case scenario you like end up in a ditch but that has never happened to me and it doesn't happen very often um but i i really like dating i do not like I, I, I don't really go on coffee or ice cream dates. I don't think that they're bad, but I think it's just, um, I think it's so easy, even if you're not using apps to like meet so many people and go on so many dates that like, I feel like if I just go have coffee with somebody or ice cream with somebody very often, it's like neither of us are really taking this seriously. I suppose you could say, like, if there's off-the-charts chemistry, which is probably what you need anyway, then then it would work. But I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't want to meet during the day for a coffee. Like, is this a well, business what? meeting? Do you go on coffee dates? You didn't spend 40 grand on coffee dates. <laughs> no, that's well, well, how I got into that. We've been trying to get him in a little bit better budget, so <laughs> that's been <laughs> happening more often. <laughs> see, dinner dates are reserved for second dates now. First dates are just to see if I um, vibe with you or not, or if there's like chemistry. That's why I live 20 minutes walking to an ice cream shop. So I think that's right. I, I guess also if you meet people in person, that's kind of a chemistry check, right? So I think I'm coming at it from the perspective of, I suppose I only deleted my apps in like September. But I was meeting people mostly, I was probably meeting 60% of people I went on dates with in person before that. And so I suppose like 
meeting somebody in real life is a little bit of like the vibe check, right? So it's almost a second date in that sense. If the first date is a walk in the park. So then what if you're at dinner with them on a first date and then it's going horrible because the person can't make conversation or it's just like you find out you're like poles like, apart. Yeah, that's why you try and sit at the bar because then if it doesn't go well, you can just talk to the bartender or to the, like, the people around you. But also, I mean, who hasn't sat through an awkward dinner? <laughs> that's true. What is your best first date story? I, oh my gosh, my best, I feel like, I, I, <laughs> I'm like, what if somebody listens to this and it's like, I wasn't your best first date? <laughs> um, I, I would say, I don't know that I have a particular best first date story. I would say that what works is like making a plan and sort of when I personally, when I go on a date, I like to just go and be like along for the ride, you know? Um, I don't want, I don't want to contribute a suggestion. I don't want to, a lot of the time, a lot of the time I feel like on dates you share food and very often I'm like, you know what, honestly, like I'm allergic to crustaceans and can you just pick like I I don't I don't I just I just want to be here I want to see your thing um so I like it when people really plan I don't mind so a lot of men take every woman on the same first date and I don't mind that I'm like oh this is like a little insight into your psychology <laughs> yeah unless the bartender whoever knows them and then but they always do Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. But then you just say to the bartender, like, what? So this is like, this guy's how many, you're like, how many, how many women does he bring here every week in front of him? No. Men love it when you're mean to them. That is, I do know that Adam loves when women are mean to, or when, yeah. I knew that one. Because then <laughs> I can be mean back to them and it's just like, it's easier. Yeah, I think I think some gentle teasing is good banter. Do you have Haley? You have a boyfriend? I do. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was your first date? Uh, we just knew each other, so it was drinks. Technically, you, you want to cool. tell how you knew each other? How did you know each other? <laughs> we were just in a friend group and would go out <laughs> as the friend group that lived together or lived near each other. Same neighborhood. Is this like a polycule? <laughs> so we, we, we live like 15 minutes walking between all of us. Oh, fun. Like friends, but Seattle. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And we just walk in. So we used to go out every Friday night and that's how we all met. I love that. Yeah. And then his uh, line was, I was trying to set all the guys up. So I'd set everyone else up for the night. And then <laughs> I was like, all right, who are, who do you have your eye on? He's like the person right in front of me. And then I was like, okay, well, right in front of me is behind or right in front of you is behind me. So <laughs> is it her? Is it her? And I would, I did not get it for too long. That's cute. Yeah. Yeah. Adam, I will actually, I'll tell you, this is a good line that somebody used on me this summer. I already wrote about it, but I was walking into a date and this was when I was still online dating. I'd met him online. But when I was walking into the restaurant, he texted me, I'm the tall, dark, and handsome one. But if that, if you need another hint, I'm wearing a green shirt. And that was a good line. You should use that. Okay. Okay. Dep okay. I'll try it tomorrow and I'll see how that goes. <laughs> see, I don't know if that would work for me. I feel like. Yeah. It was a text. Do I feel like it was a cute text. Do you okay. think you would get the ick based on that if someone did that to you on the first time you're meeting someone? No, I think confidence is good. And it's also like it's a little tongue in cheek, right? Like yeah. if somebody was dead serious, like I'm the most handsome guy in this bar, I would be like, okay, buddy. <laughs> but I think it's a fun, silly line. 
So what's like an ick on a first date if you're just sitting there and you're like, if the person does this, it's game over. You're walking out. Um, I would say open mouth chewing really grosses me out. I would say um, a lot of I, I I understand it, but I I don't like to talk about work. And I don't ask people a ton of questions about their work. And when men get like way too into the weeds of asking me questions about my job, sort of beyond, and I understand that like writing and being online is in some ways a less conventional job. So it's more interesting, but I just, I just really dislike talking about it on first dates, um, personally. What are your favorite questions to be asked? Oh my gosh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I'm <laughs> sorry, that was, that's a tough one. That's like a pretty on spot one. I think, yeah. I, I like when people tell stories. And I think my favorite questions to be asked are not necessarily specific questions. But more so like, okay, we're talking and you're like picking up on my vibe and I'm picking up on your vibe. And so you're asking me things that like are a little bit personal to me in the sense of like, oh, I realize this is a good question to ask her and it's not a question I ask everybody, but not sort of overly personal in terms of like, you know, what's your greatest trauma or something. So do yeah. you think like, okay. do you like to get personal super well on a first date? Like mine is like, I'll ask politics, I'll ask religion on the first date. I'll ask all of them. And I'll also like, do you want to have kids? Do you want to ever, can I get married? Because a first date for me, is just like such a big time investment that if it's going to go to a second date, I might as well just get all those questions answered. Yeah, so I, in between, I don't mind talking about, I will talk about absolutely anything on a first date. I will ask any question that I want to ask, and I'm, like, happy to answer any question. I do not like feeling like somebody is going through a checklist. That if that true. makes sense. Like, I don't, I, if I get the vibes that some guy's like, okay, I ask, and I, I don't, I, I'm not accusing you of this, but if he's like, I ask about kids and then I ask about career and then I ask about where she wants to live. And then I ask about this. Like, I don't, I don't like that, but I'm very, very happy to answer very personal questions. If that makes sense. And if all yeah. those things come up, I'm happy to talk about them. But sometimes I've been out with people before where I'm like, Oh, this is like your, like, this is like your, your Proust questionnaire. Yeah. Like, why are we doing yeah. this? Like that, uh, like Catherine Heigl in that movie, right. Where she brings it up. And then matches up, matches you up with her points and sees like if it works out or not. Yeah, exactly. So I don't, I don't like feeling like I'm in an interview, but um, yeah, I'm really happy to answer personal questions. And if you're out with me and like you ask me a personal question and I am not forthcoming, that just means that I don't like you. <laughs> so I was watching. Good insight. So I was watching one of your TikToks and you were talking about the worst first date you've been on recently. And it was the guy who was asking you, like, can I draw you like a uh, rose in the Titanic? <laughs> so let's talk was, about that. Yeah, but yeah, that was crazy. That guy was crazy. I actually so had he, another worst first date, but go on. Yeah. So he takes you, so he takes you to the Waldorf Astoria, right? And then mm -hmm. he, instead of going to the bar, he actually goes to the bathroom and brings mm -hmm. out napkins and tissues and be like, hey, you can get as many of these as you want. Was it like his idea of getting you a souvenir? Yes, <laughs> that, it was. It was horrifying. I mean, I was, I was, this was 10 years ago. I was 22 or 23 years old. Yeah. It was so bizarre. That guy was yeah. so weird. I don't know where he is now. I assume... He's still doing the same stuff. That was the strangest. That was the most bizarre date I've ever been on by by far. That was did so ever, great. Did he ever follow up with you or wanted to, to take you out on a second date? So 
I had met him through a matchmaker, which I was like, should not have been talking to a matchmaker. I don't know why I was doing that, but like, whatever. Um, I was too young to be doing anything like that, but, um, I had met him through a matchmaker and I took a cab and I called the matchmaker from the cab and I was like, I don't know what is wrong with you. I don't know what is wrong with this guy, but like, you can't send him on dates with other people. Like he can't go on dates. Like he can't function in society. Like he's so weird. He only drinks pineapple juice, which is obviously like a semen thing. And like, he has to draw me. And he said he doesn't like, it was, I was like, he was just so weird. And we had to sit in the lobby of the Waldorf Astoria. So he did not follow up, but, um, I, I think he was there. There's a strong chance that he was told by a third party. Don't follow up with that girl. Oh, so, so was this a matchmaker in New York city? Yeah, I mean, this was a million years ago. It was a matchmaker in New York City. I have a friend who's a matchmaker now, and she's yeah. set me up before, and it's very different. Um, it's good, guys. I think I think matchmakers can work. I think that any matchmaker who's, like, setting up, like, a 22 or a 23-year-old when the point of a matchmaker is, to, like, find people serious relationships is likely not a super ethical matchmaker. Like, 22, 23-year-olds in New York are not serious people and like I say that I was one and I wasn't serious none of my friends were serious none of us were in a position to like be set up by a match you know what I mean yeah so so <laughs> does your friend who's a matchmaker can she find me someone now I I mean I'm sure I don't know what her network is like in Seattle but I'm sure she'd be happy to, to give it I mean it sounds like you find plenty of people on your own though uh, so I've been through Hint so many times that there's no one they can recommend me now. You like it says, you, God, you ran out of Hinge. I ran out of like it says like there's like in Bumble Hinge it says there's no more matches for you in the city. What are your filters? How uh, are you? What are your, what are your filters? So I'm 28. I put up 23 to 30, and okay. that's my. And then within 30 miles of my location okay i mean that's crazy you ran uh, out of you did all of hinge at one point i had like 1300 matches on hinge well it sounds like you've got a big backlog of people you can go through and date <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think i would have to like move to your new city to start over again maybe like that's why yeah i said you're gonna move yeah that's um, why i need to how was your yeah, second for oh meeting people in person? I don't think people in Seattle wanna like talk to you when you're like in person. And Haley can testify to that. Like we call this thing called I the Seattle Freeze. Yeah, I do think I have been asked out in person more times in every other city than in Seattle. Like I I've probably been asked out maybe a dozen times in person in Seattle. And it's just, I don't know. It's just weird. Maybe Most that could be on the edge though, right? Like nobody in Seattle is doing it. So oh, yeah. it means it's like a special, like anytime you approach a girl in person, she's like, wow, like this has only happened like one other time to me. Like this is really cool. That is true. I just need to like refine my pickup lines and then just take it from there. Um, Oh, so how, what was the other bad date you went on? The other bad date? I mean, this wasn't, so you know how I don't, I don't really do this anymore, but when I was younger, um, both of these were like 10 years ago. Um, when I was younger, I used to kind of have like my flirty questions and like my moves. I saw moves for people I don't know, but I wouldn't ask people I'm like actually dating the same questions. Um, anyway. I would always ask guys, like, what's the craziest thing you've ever done on first dates? And this one guy was like, um, I, the, like, last semester that I was in college, I got in a big fight. He, he and his girlfriend at the time were in some sort of, like, an improv troupe or so, they were in some sort of a club that I thought was weird. And, um... They got in a fight and he 
punched out 16 windows in a historic building on the college campus. And he was like, I had to get, I don't even know how many, like 140 stitches. And I almost didn't graduate because he'd, he'd gone to a very, very old school and it had been a historic building. And they weren't sure if they were going to be able to replace the glass because it was like some sort of a special, like different kind of glass. And I was like, oh my God, like that is not the vibe of, that's not the, that's not the breed of crazy. I'm <laughs> into inquiry. Wow. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thanks, Anna. Bye.